Hello and welcome to another episode of The Voice of Apache. My name is Rich Bowen, and for the last 20 years or so, I've been doing these interviews with a variety of projects at the Apache Software Foundation. So it's a real pleasure to do an interview with a project that is turning 20 this week. In fact, on the uh, 17th of December, 2003, the board made the Apache Logging Services project a top level project. So it's almost exactly 20 years ago. And I have the privilege of having three PMC members here with me, Christian, Piotr, and Ralph, representing the, uh, the PMC. So thank you all for joining me. Thank you, Rich. It's a pleasure. So we have a number of things that uh, we want to discuss here. Um, let's start with just looking back. So looking back at the very beginning of the project, looking back at the, uh, the minutes from that board meeting, are any of the folks that were, that were there at the beginning, are they still involved? I was not. Uh, Christian might have been, but I don't yeah. think so. There, so no, it's uh, Scott and Seki Gushu and Jacob Jome, Yov Shapira, Paul Smith, and Mark Womack. So I recognize a few of these names from the early days, but I haven't heard from any of these folks for a long time. Yeah, several of them uh, I crossed paths with when I first joined. Uh, Christian was there before me. Okay. So, Christian, you've been with the project the longest. Uh, tell us about some of the changes that have happened over the years. Well, so one of the changes that definitely happened over the years was that the community itself, it has become, uh, how, how should I say this, a lot nicer. So, um, so, so many great people joined after I joined and we have really grown together and we've really formed a, a, you know a team a real community in, in the best Apache, Apache sense so um, I think that we are you know more inclusive more innovating than than ever before and this is actually I think because um, Ralph at some point joined this project and he started with working on log4j2 and this was this was a, a huge milestone in changing the direction of this project so suddenly when he started with 2x <clears throat> uh, suddenly uh, many more people joined and the community grew and you know it's it was really great to see that and to experience that and well so i, I think that was that was my best takeaway now. Like, if you don't mind me adding something there, um, please do. The uh, when when Christian says nicer, I, I hesitate to put it that way. Um, I went back and I looked at the, both the dev list and the PMC list, be, be, you know, as I was joining the project and and starting my work, and I could see that there was a disconnect on how to move forward. Everyone pretty much agreed Log4j1 was done. Um, and uh, Cheeky decided to move out of the project. Uh, and there were attempts to move forward with a 1.3 release that never really moved anywhere. And so what I was attempting to do was just create something new. And I went and I, on my own, I created a enough of a framework that people could talk about it, build on it. I didn't want to start from scratch in public because then it would have been nothing but a debate. So I gave them enough that was there that we could then start talking about. I committed to an experimental branch and then people joined on that and it gave them a positive direction to move in. That was when he, what he's talking about when he means nicer. It was, it was not so much about arguing about how to fix the old problems right thank you <laughs> it, it, it's right so it uh, we, we we got some spin so to say uh we really uh you know worked together collaborated and we have seen that when this new code base come in came in 
that uh, we have something new, something we want to follow up, and then people just joined, they all work together, and everything grew. And, you know, if I might offer a little bit of uh, as an outsider's perspective, one of the things that I observed about this part early on, it was one of the first projects where the project spanned multiple languages. It was it was interesting because in those early days, there was a lot of rivalry between between languages that wasn't friendly rivalry. You know, and people would <laughs> there would be extended flame wars about this sort of topic. And seeing this project working across language barriers, um, of course, I'm talking programming languages here, um, to, to do things that uh, that provided a standardized interface across multiple languages was really kind of cool. And it wasn't something that I saw happening in a lot of other communities. When I joined, some of those other languages had started to lack. Mm -hmm. people's involvement. Um, that was a big challenge. And one of them didn't make it, the PHP project. Yeah. Uh, but the others, we did manage over time to, to get new committers in. And, and uh, they're, you know, they're actually making a lot more progress than they were years ago. What's unfortunate, and it would have been really nice, is if they all strove to be as common as possible in terms of both configuration style and the kinds of things that they did in the way they worked. Uh, we had a conversation the other day about markers and the fact that the others don't even know what a marker is. And that's kind of unfortunate. And in the future, I'd really kind of like to see them become more alike in that sense, as much as possible. Of course, you're always going to have language differences. I've also talked about supporting Go because Go, Go doesn't really have any good logging frameworks. It has lots of decent logging frameworks, but none of them are very effective that, that I've seen. So, but we just haven't had the resources to actually work on it. That's right. And as, as one of the persons who was behind a uh, lot for PHP, I, I actually tried to bring it from, out from the incubator to the logging services project again, and I succeeded with that. So we brought it in there, and what I experienced was that uh, back then, a log for PHP was basically um, pretty, you know, it, it was like a separated product. So separate community, separate people, and we tried to talk to each other, but uh, we did not really do it. These days, it's all different. I see, uh, there is currently some efforts in releasing a new Kotlin version. So people just, you know, from other branches, like from Log4j, they just go over and help the Kotlin uh, people to release this. And uh, I think this collaboration, this has, uh, you know, improved by a lot over the years since 2009, when we started with Log4PHP, in example. Now, in last month's board meeting, in the November 2023 board meeting, the Flume project became part of the logging services project. Tell us a little bit about that. What what led to that? And uh, how do you see that going forward? I'm actually really excited about it. Um, I was actually a mentor for Flume in the incubator. Uh, back then, it was backed by Cloudera. And there were a lot of sharp people working on it. But then Cloudera pulled the plug on it and all of their people just pretty much disappeared. There's a few that are still left in, who are minorly involved, but I, for the past couple of years, have been the only one committing to it because I actually use it in my, in my job at work. It's a really, really nice tool, but it has a, still has a lot of room for improvement. And I have had many discussions with Matt uh, Sicker who, and, he has some really interesting ideas and he has done some things with, uh, with Log4j that would be equally applicable to Flume. Plus we've made some advancements with, how, with the build process we have for Log4j, all of which could equally apply to Flume. And Flume, you know, primarily is, is it competes with things like FluentD, FluentBit, Logstash, but it also, I mean, I'm not using it to move log files. I'm using it to move uh, other kinds of data where I need guaranteed delivery, reliability, uh, and speed. And it succeeds 
really, really well for that, but it also can move log data as well. Now, if you're doing audit logging, you definitely would want to consider Flume for that because of its really reliability aspects of it. Um, for just moving debug logging into Elk, there are other solutions. You don't necessarily need Flume. It's a little more heavyweight than you probably would require. But there is a nice place for Flume to fit in. And we've supported Flume in the way of a uh, Flume Appender for years. Uh, so to bring it in, I think it gave it more stability in terms of having a strong PMC and being able to get releases done. It gave us the ability to better implement the tooling we were, we were creating, as well as to start leveraging some of the internals that we had been creating in Log4j. That, that gives me a really lot of excitement in it. Yeah, and I actually love that we have even more great products on the front page, on the home page. <laughs> because uh, Flume, uh, uh, when I saw it first, it was like basically uh, Ralph was excited about it. And then I've seen uh, Matt was excited about it and then looked at it and I was not understanding a single thing. But uh, then I read again and uh, for some reason I think uh, it, it could be or it is probably a great product and it can grow even faster with this PMC and with the people who are you know, backing it and developing it. Now I'm sure by this point you're tired of talking about log for shell but uh, I want to ask some questions about what you've done as a result of that. What, what good things have come out of that experience? Um, and you know, in particular, I want to I want to hear about the improvements that have been made to your to your process and your funding that have been a result of that. So I'm one of the two people involved in the in the revamp of the release process. I actually wasn't there for Rock for Shell. I joined uh, shortly after because I had uh, low self preservation instinct, so I ran to the fire instead of fleeing. But what they told me is that uh, behind the curtains, when Lock for Shell hit, releases were really, really slow. Uh, it took Ralph uh, an entire day to compile uh, and to prepare a release. So what we did is uh, we automated everything. So uh, we moved uh, the compilation, the release process from the machine of the developer to the cloud now, uh, GitHub Actions does everything, uh, checks uh, the version number, checks the output timestamp, releases Maven artifacts, uh, source source artifacts. Um, basically, if we have another problem and uh, uh, we are all on vacation, we can do it from a tablet or a phone. So that's that's the advantage. We improved testing tests uh, before failed uh, randomly. Now uh, they are quite stable uh, in something like half an hour, 40 minutes, we can have a new release. If we have the patch in a couple of hours, we can uh, we can deliver a new version. I think um, some of the things that came out of that that users would probably be interested in are that Prior to that, we had leaned in the way of adding stuff into the Log4j core with the idea that users only wanted one jar file. Um, but out of that, it became quite apparent users wanted the ability to, to have better control of the features they were including. Or, you know, so in, in log4j2.x, we added things like system properties to be able to limit that. But in our new 3.0 that we're working on, we have split out a lot of the core into their own modules uh, so that not only do you have to include a jar, you, you also have to include a system property to enable things like JNDI and scripting, uh, things that could potentially be dangerous in your environment. And with the advantage of that, they do slim down the core jar slightly. We are still have room to improve on that. And so we do have things on the roadmap that we still want to split out that aren't quite there yet. Um, but we will be doing them over time. And 
that's where we really heard from what the users expected and wanted uh, from us. As far as Log4j shell it, itself goes, I never am afraid to talk about it. Um, I, I mean, obviously it was a horrible bug, but it also was a really simple set of bugs, two simple bugs that together turned into something horrible. And um, I feel terrible about the fact that it happened, but I also feel like it could have happened to anybody. So uh, in that regard, I'm very thankful it did because I really think it changed the, the, the project in a very, very positive way. Yeah, that's that's right. And to add on that, to think on the, the, the positive things of this is that uh, Log for Shell actually brought us Piotr to the team because he got interested after this thing hit us. So our community grew and not only that, so many, many people came, looked at our, our code base and told that told us what could we improve so uh this is probably the best security a project can have like 100 people are suddenly interested or 1000 people they all look at your code base they all check for your security issues so how, how can we make uh lock for j any more secure than with these tons of security reviews also we have uh now implemented things like s bomb and for dr which is uh, becoming some kind of a sort of a security standard and uh, piotr and uh, and folk on the member of our team actually implemented this and i mean this is a lot a lot of work really it's it's a lot of work and a lot of research because so many things are still you know not known and not implemented yet or uh so and and how did we receive that so that was because after lock for shell i got a call from a friend and he said, do you know the STF fund? And I, I said, no, I, I don't know it. And he said then, uh, yeah, well, so this this uh, is a government fund and they are funding projects, uh, open source projects, which are critical infrastructure or considered con uh, critical. And I said, yeah, okay, that's, that's very nice. And then he said, okay, do you even know that this fund only exists because of lock for j And I said, no, I did not know. And then he asked me, why are you actually not receive any money out of it? And I said, I don't know, probably I never heard and they never asked. And um, that was basically the time when, when I actually reached out to them. And uh, today uh, I'm, I'm really uh, excited that uh, they agreed uh, to, to give us some funding. Um, I offered it to the whole PMC, but only three of us were able to take this funding. And now with a little bit of money in back, uh, we, we are able to implement all these things like SBOM and 40 year, which are complicated and sometimes even almost impossible, I would say, to implement for somebody who does it in just spare time. So uh, this is also something I think which changed that uh, people now realize how important these open source projects are. And now they are starting to, you know, think about funding or what happens when there is a security issue like Lock for Shell and the original developer is just not at home or just does not care. So I think this is also a very, very good, uh, you know, benefit of using Apache software because uh, there is always many people around who are willing to fix these bugs and working together. So. I think it's 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 so much better than just using uh, projects which are developed an example by just one person or so. So now with this funding, we are even able to make it more secure. Yeah, with with Asbom, we have a much better view of uh, which dependency do we we have. Uh, so, uh, log4j core, as, as Ralph explained, in 3.x should only have one dependency, Java base. So, uh, uh, if a vulnerability is uh, exploitable in log4j core, it will be our own vulnerabilities or Java's. Uh, but if we look at other appenders, our, our optional modules, um, dependencies are really, really huge. We 
for example, the Fluma tender, we can go down five, six levels. And without S-bomb, we wouldn't even know that there was a CVE against a dependency of a dependency of a dependency. So we, ne we wouldn't even check if it affects us. So splitting, splitting log 4 j uh, core into parts and checking with, uh, with the information we get from the SBOM vulnerabilities will make uh, less, less exploitable vulnerabilities. And if uh, there are vulnerabilities, people can just remove the module that, that's vulnerable and go on with their life. Yeah, so th these kind of things, actually, even when log for sure happened, which made me very, very sad and very, very shocked. But uh, when I when I listened to Piotr being excited about these kind of things and what we were able to do with some uh, funding, I, I'm, I'm super positive about the future of Log4J and uh, Flume and all the sub projects we are maintaining because we have we have uh, you know people around we have a little bit of money around we have the strong baking of of, of the Apache software foundation so what could go wrong so personally I would not uh, use any other logging framework even when we have that history with log for sure yeah future is bright I guess <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the future now um it feels unusual in open source for a project to have been around for 20 years and still be still be innovating, still be doing interesting things. And you're one of those projects, so that's exciting. Tell us what is coming in, in the near future and what you have envisioned for the longer future. The near future is 3.x. That was originally slated to, to uh, with Java 9 to support JPMS. It's way overdue for, for JPMS. I mean, Java 9 is long gone, but that's primarily because JPMS was very immature in the beginning. Not, not JPMS itself, but the world around JPMS. Um, we couldn't make much progress uh, in moving forward because the dependencies we had weren't JPMS compatible. Uh, they weren't automatic modules or, or anything. Uh, the tooling was very poor. Today, we have much better tooling. Pretty much all the dependencies we have, uh, at least to you know, the minimal degree, support JPMS. So we're able to actually make much better progress against that. Um, and again, I talked about the modularization. That partly was due to JPMS because it, it's sort of a requirement that when you start exposing things. That did create a lot of pain for us because how you create unit tests and create test modules, test frameworks, is completely different with, with when you're talking about the module path, uh, especially since we use Maven and Maven has built in uh, assumptions about how, how it's going to work based upon whether it finds a module info file or not. So those were all pain points. And then we've already talked about some of the other benefits that, you, that you're getting. Now, in, in addition, everything's based on the service loader because of JPMS. In, in log4j 2.x, we use a, a custom file for loading our plugins. In log4j 3, those were converted into classes that are loaded via service loader. We are using service loader for a lot more things and we have separated out our plugin mechanism into its own jar file. It's separate from the core. Potentially, it could be used outside of Log4j by other people if they wanted to. And then that plugin system also has been enhanced to do dependency injection uh, because we found some areas there that were very cumbersome for us in terms of binding things together. Like we were having to pass our pass uh, our logger context all around the place and it was a mess. Um, we enhanced property support so that you can have, if you have multiple applications running in a Tomcat, for example, each can have their own set of log4j properties uh, to configure them. One of the things I can think of is, is in the future that we're going to get hit by is the thread context. Uh, 
is based on the uh, Fred locals. Well, they have come up with, uh, what is it, scoped variables? Those aren't going to play very nicely with the thread context, uh, you know, with the, the, the fast threading that they're talking, lightweight threads they're implementing. Um, thread locals will still work, but we, I think we're going to have to investigate and, and other alternative ways of doing that that are lighter weight than using thread locals. But we haven't really started on that yet. So those are some of the areas I can think of. Uh, the fact that the JDK is continually innovating kind of necessitates the fact that we have to innovate along with it. Yeah, we are, we are also planning uh, native support for Graal VM. Um, this, these are also problems with, with the way we we use reflection. Graal VM doesn't like reflection too much. Um, so probably not for 3.x, but maybe 3.1.x, uh, you will be able to compile uh, an executable, a native executable that, uh, that runs uh, logging. Yeah, I'm, I'm very surprised nobody mentioned our efforts that uh, we try to make our API more visible because we have our API inside the core and everybody is using Log4J like, oh, this is a single product. But in fact, it's actually two products. And I think uh, that's at least what excites me. Um, we are uh, separating out the real API uh, from, uh, from the Log4J product more and more and trying to get various implementation for it probably, I don't know. Uh, but maybe it will happen and so this is i think also very exciting and uh, because it gives us a lot of opportunities i do want to say that cheeky's work when he split off from log for j1 and created slf for j and and log back although uh i couldn't use those frameworks and the reason i started working on log for j2 some of the ideas he had there were good. And the fact that he completed, he completely separated the API and created SLF for J and, and created logback separately. That was a good idea, which is why we've done that since day one. It's just that we haven't advertised it very well at all over the years that our API is completely separate. Uh, and that's a mistake we intend to, to change very soon, very soon. I'm, I'm pretty much excited about this, uh, but I'm also excited about one more thing because uh, because we started to communicate better with our users and we now have a block. So I think everything we are, uh, we are doing or innovating or discussing will also be published on this block. And uh, if anyone is interested in these kind of things, you can either subscribe to the mailing list or at least read the blog and then chime in to these discussions. Also, we have experimenting with GitHub discussions so where users can ask these kind of questions or uh, let us know if they need a specific feature or have a desire for, you know, for something in 3x or something, because uh, I'm pretty sure everybody is listening. Uh, to make even a better product. Shaky Fault uh, invented the, to name the API SLF4J and implementation logback. Uh, we didn't do that. So people uh, have this log4j uh, trademark and they think, yeah, this must be linked. Uh, besides, there is the, the same uh, group of people that works on the API and the implementation so we can take shortcuts, add the helper functions to the API that will help us in implementations. I think uh, if we change the name, uh, it, it could be more popular. Look for API, maybe. <laughs> Just kidding, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I will say one thing, again, about log for shell It happened right before Thanksgiving where we got this email. We were all merrily going around our business. And then all of a sudden we get this and we look at it and none of us really realized how serious it was when we first saw it. I think it took us about a week to realize this is really terrible. And in fact, it wasn't until we went and did the CVSS score and it came out of 10 that we realized how bad it was. The thing was, is 
once we got it and we realized how serious it was, and this only it only took a day or two for us to realize it was a bad bug. The whole team jumped in, and even guys who had been relatively dormant started popping up and offering to help in whatever way they can or, or could. We actually started using Slack more because we wanted to have discussions that were completely private, which Slack guarantees that private channels can't be eavesdropped on. So that's not a plug for them, but it, it is a, a case where we, we take security seriously. And we didn't even we didn't even want other ASF members necessarily listening in on our discussions regarding how to what was going on and how to fix it. Because the last thing we wanted was for the public to find out about it, which unfortunately they managed to do anyway. In, in that regard, I, I think it actually even made the team closer. And obviously it helped to bring more people in, more activity to the project. I mean, it's probably the first time any security people actually looked at the code because we got immediately got four or five other bugs pointed out to us that we then corrected after that. Of course, none were nearly as severe, but uh, they were all very greatly appreciated. And I hope that security people are still continuing to scan it and look at it because that's, you know, we don't know if anyone's looking at it for that purpose unless they actually tell us they're doing it. Um, the other thing I'd like to, to point out is uh, several of us, although we can't take advantage of the program from uh, that these Vulcan and uh, Christian and P Peter are in, uh, we can take advantage of GitHub sponsorship because there's no, uh, no ties to that. That's just basically saying thank you for your involvement. That's greatly appreciated for anybody doing that. And, and in fact, there were some significant sponsors who, who came forward uh, and, and gave us some support after that. And it was greatly appreciated. Um, many of us left our daytime jobs aside so we could work on this 24-7. And all of our employers were very, very supportive of it. And so for that, we're, we all can say thank you both to our employers and to the public who did support us through that. Um, and it, again, it was greatly appreciated. Um, you know, we'll take support from anybody, anytime, you know, because it, it, it's nice to have people say thank you. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I mean, <clears throat> back then, it was, it was a time uh, that suddenly people stopped sleeping, I think, and uh, they were just, as, as Ralph mentioned, people were just coming back, back from wherever they were. They have seen there is a problem, they came back, and I know specifically one person who, I, I think he, he worked the whole night on something, and he did not sleep, he did not, I mean, I mean, it's crazy. So when, you, when you talk to other people, outsiders of the Apache Software Foundation, they all think, okay, this is only open source. They probably have not done a thing or went to vacation for this or something. But in fact, the opposite is true. They were all working really, really, really hard. And I think uh, this is proof that models like uh, the Apache Software Foundation uh, actually work. And I, I mean, I know we have, projects which are not running well or something but this project at least it's different and as Ralph mentioned we have had so many security reviews so um when i hear somebody say oh log 4 j had this log for shell issue it's probably not so secure then i can only laugh because now we have all these uh, security researchers looking very very closely and telling us what to fix and what to do and if they overlooked something, I can totally rely on a team of like, let's say 10 people or so who are ready to stop the day jobs for a while, fix the bugs, come together and just work hand in hand. After that while, probably to go away again, do something else. But in that time of emergency, we all come together and I, I'm pretty sure this will be for the next 10 years or 20 years or 30 years. So I, I guess it makes lock for j uh, a safe bet to rely on. Yeah, we have we have also contingency in the community. So uh, we have very old uh, committers, old in the sense of people that joined 20 years ago. Um, we have uh, people that joined, I joined last year. 
um, Volkan joined uh, three or four years ago. So we have uh, a continuous supply of people. There is no risk, like in our projects, which don't follow the Apache style, where uh, someone just retires and, okay, sorry, this software is no longer available. We probably will have every couple of years a new committer that takes takes over where our left. Thank you all so much for your time and uh, for sharing this insight on the, uh, the last 20 years. And we look forward to the next 20 years of this project. We wish you lots of luck. For those that are watching and listening, if you want to get involved in this project, you just need to go to logging.apache.org and uh, see what see what projects are available there and just dig in. So thank you again. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. Let's talk in 10 years again, probably. All right. All right. <laughs>